Good evening, you little uh, uh, Turkish game hens. Remember Turkish game hen? I remember my mother went on a date or something one time. She'd met a man and they got married years later and he was a, uh, he did a, he ran a, a corn operated car wash. You know, you could pat him on the back and hear the quarters in him. That kind of guy, you know, local guy. And I remember they, I guess, I don't know, he invited us over to his house like the first time he ever invited us over. Mr. Charlie, they called him Big Charlie. They called him that right up until uh, he died. And um, what was I talking about? Oh, I'll tell you this. So, Big Charlie, he had us over for some Turkish game hen. Turkish game hen, is that it? Tur is it Torcus? Torcus? What's that color? Turquoise game hen. Turquoise game hen, no. Turkish game hen. Turkish game hen. Three three sounds. Um, He had us over for some Turkish game hen. Turkish game hen. Say that ten times fast, huh? Turkish game hen. Turkish game hen. Turkish game hen. Uh, oh, I just, this gal I, that I know, um, told me that if you say rise, rise up lights, it sounds like razor blades in Australian rise up lights. Try it. I bet you will laugh if you, if you do try it, rise up lights, rise up lights, rise up lights. Have you been, what have you been doing? You've been having some rise up lights. Rise up lights. You're going to just walk into a hardware store later and be like, rise up lights. Um, But yeah, Big Charlie, he had us over for some Turkish game in. I mean, damn, we're poor as hell. And you bring us over for these little fancy ass, uh, you know, little French pigeons, man. These bitches, I mean, the shoulder muscles, I remember... The shoulders were just so like that deltoid. And I remember sitting at it just trying to look nice like we'd never been over there. And we had, I think, I don't know if my mom had made them. Just, just trying to be outside of our means, you know. Like, damn, give me a damn McNugget, baby, you know. Give me a damn uh, hot, uh, hot dog. You know, give me something that I could, that'll... That'll, that'll, you know, my stomach is even going to recognize. You send this little bad little, this little money pigeon in, this little Turkish game uh, hen in. I, my system doesn't know what to, you know. That's like when a uh, a realtor, you know, walks into a homeless camp. You know what I'm saying? They, they, it's going to be a little, like, what are you, this is, you know, what are you, why are you in here? Um... But Big Charlie had us over there for them Turkish game hens, and then, and then years later he would die. But the, uh, but I remember just seeing that little pigeon, be like I, I felt bad eating it. It looked like a damn little uh, sarcophagus of a damn, you know, a famous bird or something. You know, maybe one of those birds that had been in World War II. Those little, um, you ever see the pigeon with the little backpack on it? That's when we could use pigeons as spies. Remember that? I went to the museum over there in Philadelphia. Over there where they city of brotherly love, man. And they got some brothers who'll beat the love right out of you too if you're out, uh, out there near Temple late at night. But, uh... What were we talking about? Oh, out near Philadelphia. Yeah, that little turkey. Oh, I went to the spy museum and they showed the pigeons in there with the backpack. And that's when animals used to do something. You know, you used to see animals doing work. See an eye dog, uh, spy pigeon. Um, what else? Uh, those uh, cola bears, those 
uh, Coca-Cola, Coke, ba- you know, the Polar, the Coke Bears, them bitches up there. Sl- d- test driving that freaking sugar, the, the, the sugar sipper. So you and I don't have to. They up there on that, in the Arctic. That's a job they can do. If they hired humans to go up there, we would, you know, we wouldn't even be able to keep this shit warm. A polar bear, they hold something in their hand, it'll, you know, keep it so warm. They'll melt a damn chocolate if it's in a tank. You can't. A polar bear can't even hold a chocolate. Isn't that sad, man. Polar bear can't even hold a chocolate because it just it'll just do too much heat through it. You love a little thing of chocolate soup in your hand. But R.I.P. Big Charlie, man. He uh had us over for those game hands and fancy ass little. You know, I did. I felt damn sad eating that little bitch. It looked like a damn newborn uh, chicken. It just looked like it had never had a chance, you know. That thing was built real small and just the deltoids on it. I remember it looked like Floyd Mayweather. Look, the little bitch looked like damn uh, uh, Sugar's Ray Leonard, man. Looked like damn Sugar's Ray Leonard, baby. I'll say this, man. I, the other day I saw a guy in a, uh, I want to be honest with you. I want to be honest. The other day, I saw a guy in a uh, leather jacket at a Mexican restaurant. If you wear a leather jacket at a Mexican restaurant, well, you can just stay away from me. You can stay away from me. You can stay away from me. Because I don't need that kind. Halloween is over and I don't need to see no more of the damn uh, Pandora's box escapees running around. If you wear a leather jacket to a Mexican restaurant, you can stay away from me. Do you hear that? Because I feel like some of you don't hear it. If you wear a leather jacket to a Mexican restaurant, you can stay away from me because I am a better man than that. Let's get into it, baby. Thank you guys for being here with me today, and thank you for being a part of my life. I'm upstairs. Come on. We coming up, baby. Eddie Nine Volt. I'm on a come up. Yeah. Feels real good after I've been so blue. Mm-hmm. He's on a come up. I'm on a come up. It feels so good to have a brand new view. Oh, yeah, He's yeah. On come, up. come on, Eddie. Well, I just broke up with my baby. To Lucky Street when the mayor came and said to me, You're on the come up. You're on the come up. And it's plain to see between you, you and me, we got so much love and in chemistry. It's gonna come up. It's gonna come up. Well, good looking, bone coming, and I ain't gonna go running. He's on the come up. That's, um, 89V, 89 volt with the come up. And there we are coming up into November. Man, November. That was always an interesting time of year when I was young. After Halloween had gone, there was so much big energy heading into Halloween. You know, what are you going to be? What, you know, where, where, where are you going? How do we, is there going to be candy? Is there... You know, I don't have any face paint. We, I remember we'd come home and just basic. I remember, you know, sometimes we didn't plan ahead at, at my house. And obviously nobody planned ahead if they had four children and, and you know, and the dad was in his 70s. There was very little planning going on. Um, 
but as child as a child we did you know we just so sometimes we'd get home for there would be the day the night of halloween we get home we didn't have anything no preparatory you know my mom had bought um raggedy andy costumes one year so those bitches were going around you know and then it was uh i remember we cut the it was raggedy ann those are the ones mom had bought or dad had bought and then we cut the hair on them bastards one time so we next thing you know you raggedy ann uh now you raggedy andy you cut them bitches real you a little soft in the cheeks kind of glistening cheeks raggedy andy g cheeking and then we cut the hair even more, you know, and then you kind of trans Andy. You trans, you know, you rat, you know, you, tr- you tragedy, you know, you out there, you don't even know, put the, put it in the bag, put it in my hand, you know, I'll balance, you know, who, you doing the, you know, that's the Lord shell game right there, baby, you out there trans and out. And then they've some. I remember. I think my brother burned the uh, hair off the damn thing. So then you get out there. You cancer uh, or chemo, Andy. You chemo Andy now. Now you, you know. I remember we do a fake IV into the arm, and uh, one year my uh, I did chemo Andy, and my brother did. Um, he was like a pastor, like the the death, the you know the last pastor you see that little death. That little death bouncer. You know, that little, uh, the guy who's like kind of, a little kind of a creepy position. I'm going to come over while you die. You know what I'm saying? That's a little, you know, kind of the Mike Tyson of the pastor kingdom, I feel like. He's like, I'm going to put you to sleep. Speaking of death, liquid death right here. Oh. Oh, murder your thirst. Yeah, but I remember that. And then, uh, yeah, we'd be out, you know, it's just funny. The evolution of a costume you see a lot. You would see in our area, our home. Um, What else? Yeah, but it's interesting you come into this time of year and now it's like this mad dash to Christmas. I literally feel like there's a starting line and everybody's just like, all right. And there's going to be one water table where you stop and get a cup of water. That's Thanksgiving. And then it's... It's just a mad dash to the end of the year. Um, But I do like the, the weather and the air getting crisp. You know, this when I was young, this is the time of year you'd see a lot of stray animals come through. Because they'd be done partying for the summer or done, you know, out. You know, some of them would have maybe, I guess, been, I guess, in the mountains for the summer. I don't know where. I guess an animal trying to stay cool would be in the mountains. So I guess they come down from the mountains at that time of year during winter to stay, to get into a house or to stay warm. You know, to stay at the same, you know, stay at a good, healthy uh, room temperature, but outdoor room, porch. Uh, so anyway, you see a lot of animals, stray animals come through and I love a stray animal. You don't see them anymore. You know, back in the day, animals used to be brave enough. Like, all right, I, you know, I've had a good time here at mom and dad, you know, I'm going to go out and try out the universe. You know, I'm gonna put my backpack on or my front pack if they, you know, however they traveled or whatever. And, and then I'm gonna get out, you know, I'm going to get out and try out the world. I'm going to do well. Yo, I'll make you proud. You know, I'm going to be an extra in Babe Pig in the City. You know, I'm going to be an extra in Madagascar. You know, the animals, with you'd see you'd see a stray animal come through. You'd see something pass by, you know, a little chimpanzee or something. You know, you'd see a little, uh, you know, you'd see a little monkey with maybe a little, you know, he'd have a little pail or something inside of it would be like a little Bichon. You know, you'd see stray animals come through. And a stray animal was, it was like the Lewis and Clark of animals. You know, you don't know where that bitch had been. You know, you're like, what's going on, buddy? Tell me where, you know, give me some, what's happening? He's got a Narcan, he's got a Narcan needle in his chest. He's, you know, he's got a, a tattoo of a Frisbee on his arm. He's been through, he's like, yeah, I was at the park, man. 
They closed the parks. They closed the parks. Anyway. What am I talking about? I don't know. Who does know? Who does know? But I do like this time of year. You know, you see, because winter's coming, so animals need to make a choice. That's when nature chooses to do a few things. You know, the trees go to sleep inside themselves. The leaves fall off. It's kind of naughty. It's like the the trees saying, all right, I'm going to get naked, but I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to sleep. You're like, damn, come on. Stay up for an hour. You know what I'm saying? Let me climb them branches, mom. Let me climb them branches, mama. Um... What else? Thank you, uh, everybody, for supporting the uh, the Netflix special that's out. It's been nice. Um, I'm looking in the news right now. It says here, Carol Baskin suing Netflix over Tiger King 2. Carol's about that. Carol's that, you know, she's such that, she's like such a, she's like the Karen, it feels like, of the Tiger Kingdom. And I think we might have gotten a video from Carol uh, when we did that Christmas Spectacular show last year. We might have got a video sent in from her. I'm not sure. If so, I'll see if we, a cameo. See if we can put it in this episode. But um, Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. It's Carol Baskin from Big Cat Rescue. Theo and Tammy, I'm so happy to see you together here in the new year. Oh. I hope you and all of your fans have a perfect 2021. And remember, the big cats always get the best beef. Tiger King 2, she argues that producers are simply rehashing, repackaging unused stuff to make it seem like she has given new interviews or insight. That's every sequel. That's all that is. All the documentaries, the second one now is just, uh, they interview one like outside character. They'll interview probably a real tiger. They'll probably interview Tony the Tiger. He's like, I don't know. You know, I was eating Kellogg's. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't, I'm don't. i shocked what they were doing to these other tigers. I'm just a drawing, so if I'm hungry, they draw me a steak. They draw me a uh, bird. So... That's it. They're saying they're going, you know, she's she going to sue him. Good for Carol. Sue, look, sue him. Sue. It, that, that's where we, it's just people suing each other every day. People suing, not shocked. Sue Netflix also. They should also be sued for putting on um, that new Colin Kaepernick show. I think at some point you're just creating content to start real life trouble uh, that's what I think I think it just felt like pandering to race race racism that was just it just felt like the lowest common denominator for racial pandering that's what it felt like. And it felt like it takes away from real stuff that happens. Or realer instances. Um, that's what it felt like to me. Now, I'm also a white guy saying this. But it just, uh, it just felt sad. It just felt like you guys can do better. And you could put your face on something better. Um... But that's, just, you know, I'm a Polish Nicaraguan bad boy. I don't know every, I, you know, I don't know anything. So, but that shit felt fucking cheap. Um, Kaepernick, also in the news after comparing being an NFL athlete to being a slave. He was slammed after this. They said, yeah, that seemed like a lot, a lot of difference. A lot of difference. Um, big difference. Big difference been, than being on the 49ers and being on the Zaire 
slave boat. I mean, that's you guys travel in a way different class of travel. That alone, a lot different. Um, I think we all feel like slaves sometimes, Colin, when it comes to like our jobs and stuff. But sometimes that's work. You could call it slavery if you want. You could also call it having a job. But let's move on. Sorry. I don't know why I'm even getting into that. It's just on the news list. Um, What else? Elon Musk becomes the first person to be worth more than $300 billion. Um, not shocked, dude. If you don't see what's going on, there's about 30 people that have all the money. Okay, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Milton Bradley, Brennan Schaub, um, and I don't know who else, probably a lot of politicians or former politicians. Uh, they are all taking trips to space because obviously something is about to happen here, I think, on Earth. I think maybe something's about to happen, man. And maybe there's like 10 or 20 people that are going to get to keep going. You know, maybe they'll have a draft or something. Uh, maybe they'll have a draft and you get to see what it's like. But yeah, there's going to be 10 or 20 people keep going. Um, and why, don't, why do they pick Colin Kaepernick for this story? Couldn't you pick somebody that's had a real, real struggle? That, 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 I think that's something I do not understand. Pick somebody that's had a real struggle. I know friends that have struggled. Way more than that guy. Don't sell me struggle with not a struggler. You better attach a struggler to struggle, daddy. Or I'm not buying it. So if you want to sue Netflix for anything, Carol Baskin, I think at least throw that on the radar. Um, and I don't have to be right about any of that. But, but yeah, the rich are leaving. They're leaving. Rich people are leaving. They're on their way out. You even, sometimes I got on Southwest a couple weeks ago, there's a little lady in there, a little, I think maybe Chinese lady with a little umbrella. And right out the gate, I said, oh, I know what's up. They're practicing. They're, this is a test for her. She's going to be one of the finalists. She's going to make it, you know. She'll be on there with Elon Musk. She'll be on there with, uh, you know, who else? They got to take probably Lester Holt. They got to take a brother or two. So maybe Lester Holt or uh, Reggie Jackson. He'll make it. Who else would make the list, dude? Yeah. Maybe a cartoon somebody. You know, probably Pokemon or Gizzard. 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 Somebody. They'll make it. Chester Cheetah might make that bitch. They might take a drawn animal. Uh, who else? You're going to need some women on there. You're going to need some beautiful, probably Betsy Ross. That little... Knit it and quit it, boy. You want to come over? Netflix and quilt, baby. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know who would be on that final vessel. I, you know, I won't get on it. They probably won't have me on it unless it's of a lottery drawing. But it's obvious, man. Elon Musk's net worth has surpassed three hundred billion dollars, making him the first person on this planet to reach that milestone. The surge in Musk's assets come as lawmakers are considered a billionaire's tax. <laughs> Man, it's getting wild, baby. A billionaire's tax. Musk slammed the billionaire tax proposal saying that my plan is to use that money to get humanity to Mars. That's what I'm saying. They're, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're leaving. The rich are leaving. We will be here. We will be here arguing with robots that are coming to vaccinate us in our homes. People will be fist fighting robots in their front yards. People will be, it will be down to very perishable 
non-perishable foods, Snickers, Twix. Um, the UN says $6 billion from the world's billionaires could solve a hunger crisis. Elon Musk says he will sell Tesla stock and donate proceeds if the UN can prove that. Wow. Six billion would solve the world. It's funny. We nobody people we must not want to solve hunger. We haven't been able to solve it. You know, it's like one of those crosswords. You know, sometimes you pick it up again, you look at it, you're like, ah, oh, try this again. That didn't work. Sometime, you know. You got to have hunger in the world too, I think, because you got to have a next, you know, you got to, if if, you, if nobody's hungry, then what? People sitting around just thickening out. People sticking around just taking Tums. There'll be like a black market for Tums. Everybody's all fat and fed. Everybody's just ordering pizza. Yeah. I'm going to let you know that Blue Chew is the one. You know, I've taken it. I'll nibble a little bite off of one. If I'm if I'm thinking about sex or if I just... Sometimes you just want to feel blood inside of your penis, inside of your wiener. And so you want that little thing to bag up. And not, not, not really full, just like you're kind of sneaking some gin into a, a ball game, you know? You want that little... You know, almost where you could where you could prick the end with a pen and just just catch you a little hit of that, make you a damn mint julep right there. Um, Blue Chew is what I'm telling you about a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets can help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of erectile dysfunction. And I'll agree with that. They make that good wiener upper, baby. You know what I'm saying? They put your penis on Broadway. They really put your dick out there. They put your dick out there. Your, your dick, somebody come on and steal your dick. That's how it looks enticing. So it's that kind of medicine if you like to up your wiener and get your wiener better. And I'm sorry for saying D-I-C-K so many times. Go to BlueChew.com. Use promo code Theo. Yep, try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Theo at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code Theo, to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Mint Mobile is back. Mint Mobile. Mm, what are you chewing on? It smells great. That's Mint Mobile. I'm chewing on my savings. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you. In the form of mystery fees. Yep, Mint Mobile won't allow it. Mint just passes on sweet savings directly to you, to you. For people looking for extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. If you're not 100% satisfied... Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash Theo. That's M-I-N-T-M-O-B-I-L-E dot com slash T-H-E-O. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month. At mintmobile.com slash Theo. That's wild to think that we're going now. It used to be that foreign aid that like nations, starving nations stuff would go to like uh, governments for aid. And now they're going to corporations. That's that's wild. When you really think about it, it just shows you where we are. You know, if you like the, pre, you know, Samsung is the damn Samsung, I mean, damn, Samsung uh, is the, they're, they own almost everything. If you look on your own house, probably you see, a, you know, damn, Darren Samsung is on there. Like, who is that? You know? You look, you know, you look in your wife's heart, it's probably, you know, Alan Samsung is in that, but you're like, who is, what? 
everything's owned by Tyco, Samsung, um, uh, what else? EA Sports, Tesla. It's all, those are the governments now. YouTube. Uh, it's just, the rest of the stuff's a, it's a mirage. It's a damn sand fountain, you know. It's a, uh, it's like seeing a damn um, hot dog in a underwater cave or whatever. So, all right, let's get back into it, man. Um, yeah, the, some big fights coming up. Uh, that Michael Chandler Justin Gaethje fight. I'm so excited about that. Um, I started going back to the jujitsu gym. Um, staying in my yoga. Uh, been going to a lot of my recovery meetings recently. Trying to lean back into that and find some new new ground. Um, what else? It's that time of year, you know. Everything feels like the candy is gone. In some ways, uh, with the Halloween that build up and that excitement, and sometimes I just, uh, you know, it's it's like a this time of year always felt like kind of a new. There's a frenetic energy that gets into the air. Um, you know, it's a new year coming. You know, it's like you're kind of finishing things up. Um. And yeah, I want to try to embrace some of those moments where things feel like new and crisp and uh you know, I want to I want to feel some of that. So so I'm looking forward to trying to trying to do that some. Um my hair looks like a damn pioneer the sun. I look like the handsome son of a uh inbred pioneer family. That's kind of how I feel right now. And not heavily inbred, like a light dusting of it, you know. Kind of like you're looking around the dinner table, you're like, okay, there's there's some uh there's people holding hands under the table that should not be. Um, I'll tell you this. That uh the come up by Eddie Nine Volt, that was our opening song. And we got a gift someone sent in. Then I'll open in a little while. All right, you guys sent in some beautiful calls and stuff. I want to thank everybody that came out to the shows in Charleston. Had a beautiful, just a nice time walking around that city. God, it is. God, it's nice. Went over to the, uh, you know, there's all these different little areas. There's horses going by. My buddy's like, dude, you know, the horses, they... A lot of them don't want to be doing the uh, tours. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. I was at a horse field a couple weeks ago. And those horses, honestly, look like they would give anything to have the opportunity to get out in the world and work. And I, 100%. Oh, they're free. They're run on the pasture. They're not. They were huddled in the shade of a uh, very small, like, tree and scarecrow. Okay, there's like nine horses trying to hide in the shade of one scarecrow. Impossible. And you could tell they were tired of it. You could tell they were tired overall of just being not, you know, having nothing to do. So when I go, I'm in Charleston, and I see a horse out there working his ass off. Okay? Working his white and chocolate speckles ass off. This thing was rumped out. This thing was caked up too. Beautiful ass. And he's out there working. People are making his day. He's, you know, hey, you're doing good, buddy. You know, people, hey, what's his name? Pickles. Hey, Pickles. You know, they, they're living the life. They got on the freaking, uh, What's the thing horses have? It's like a, um, it's like that gray, you know, if you work for Mr. Gray and he makes you do sex or whatever, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, you can't look over here at the sex, boy. You can't look over here at the sex, mister. You know what I'm talking about? 50, 50 areas or something. Anyway, he reminds me of that movie. 
these guys are having a great time out there. I could testify. I could see it firsthand. Um, and yeah, it's a beautiful area. Thank everybody for coming out there. And then we went to Asheville, North Carolina. Very, very, uh, it was like a wine. It's like a wine, that city. It's like a wine. It's like, hey, have you been, have you ever had a wine? Have you ever had a wine? Excuse me, what'd you say? I can't hear you. I'm upstairs. I'm upstairs. I'm upstairs. Let's get into your calls, man. I've been babbling enough, but thank you to everybody that's come out. We we, we got a great uh, segment of tour coming up. We're hitting Richmond this week in Baltimore, then off for a couple days, then Burlington, Vermont, Portland, Maine, uh, Albany, Buffalo, Columbus, Baltimore, you know, a lot. There's just a lot on the table, and I'm here for that. I'm here for all of that, so excited to see you guys. Here's a couple of calls. Uh, we had people calling in last time to uh, response to Swipe Society, and do you think this is the end of the uh, of the realm of time, and are things changing? Is this the end of society as we've known it what's going on if you listen to that last solo episode we have people calling in and then some australians i guess have checked in let's hear g'day studio it's ben calling from falcon in western australia good day ben good day brother and i'm glad you guys are uh doing well over there man really happy to hear that you sound good, man. Good to hear you guys are doing well. Over and out. I'm um, just listening to your podcast. You said, call in if you're from Australia. So here I am, mate. I am a beekeeper taking over the family business. And uh, I often find myself with you blasting through my ear pods, working the bees. And then uh, I laugh out loud at something in my work, mate looked at me and was like, what the fuck are you laughing at, boy? Thanks for calling, brother. I'm glad you guys are doing well uh, out there, dude. And I'm glad you guys are keeping bees. And it's interesting that it's really it's such a, you know, it's like you sneak in, you steal that honey from them. You smoke them out, you put that smoke on them, and then you steal a shit, man. It's very much like... uh you know, a lot of um, probably crime like in the 70s. I would feel like you get everybody all huffed up on that puff, baby, on that freaking spliffing door, dog. And the next thing you know, you stealing every, you know, you, you getting everything. You rolling out with all the guava. So I respect what y'all are doing. I wish y'all didn't smoke them out. I wish y'all came in mano y mano. Maybe you tie a little knife to your butt. And you and them uh, go at it, you know. Um, you know, just king of the sting, baby. You know, there's one way to do it. But thank you for checking in, man. I'm glad Australia is doing well. I'm glad you guys are still obviously taking care of what's, uh, you know, doing what you can in the world. All right. We got another question. Another uh Somebody call in from Australia as requested. I've just wanted to make sure you guys are doing well over there. You know, I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, we don't get a lot of Australian contact here. You know, you look at a globe and, and you see it on there and send them, I'll check a globe. Make sure Australia is still on there. You know, because like, you know, a lot of big winds and big water you know, thoroughfares over that direction. So I'm, I'm just happy to hear you guys are doing well out there and you guys are fucking around with bees and that's, I mean, that's really, it's almost like lost, you know, they got on that island and next thing you know, they're, you know, then people are doctoring up some dragons. So who knows what these beekeepers are up to? That could be a warning. You know, there could have been Morse code in that voicemail. We don't know because I don't know it. And that's God, baby. Let's hear one more Australia. Hey, dude. This is a fan from down under in Australia. I heard you talking about Australia on the last video. 
wanting some more callers coming through, so giving you a buzz, man. Just, just want to say I'm such a big fan. Thank you, brother. And thank you for being alive still down there and for doing whatever you guys are doing. You know, one of the uh, international issues with Australia, people don't know what you're doing. So if you told us what you're doing sometimes, I think everybody would feel probably a little bit more, people would sleep easier. Um, but let's hear it, mate. Thank you for calling, bub. just want to say that probably about a 50% of the reason why I listen to you is your accent, man. I love the accent. Also, just the hilarious terms that you have for everything. It's just funny as shit. The question for you is, what do you think of Australians? I mean, last time I was in the States, a lot of the feedback I was getting is, you know, Australians are tough. Australians are kind of Bushmen. Yeah. I'll tell you exactly what I feel like about Australians. I feel like you guys have served your time. And I say that with a clean heart, Bubby. I feel like you guys have done your time, whatever you did, whatever your grandparents did, and you deserve to be free. I believe you deserve to be free, man. All of you. almost Probably almost all of you. There's some of you. I don't know. Ty Tuivasa, you know, does, you know he may still... They want to keep him locked up for another couple of weeks. But um, honestly, man, from the bottom of my heart, I feel like you guys have done your time. And I feel like they should let you out, man. And if there's anything we can do to help you, let us know. Uh, 985-664-9503 is the hotline. And it'll be in the YouTubes as well. And I don't know what the international capability of calling is, but they should let you call. But now you get one call, don't you? Even as inmates, you get one dial. Hi, hello. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, Dad. Next up. Um, oh, we had some... Uh, one, one of the topics we discussed last time was on the solo episode was... Uh, it was... Um, It was, uh, hold on, I know it. It was, oh, the end of times. Are we getting towards the end of society? We'll check back in with that episode right here. This is exactly what it was. We're getting to the end. You're seeing, I think, the downside of uh, the comforts of a capitalist, of maybe capitalist America. I don't know that. I don't know enough knowledge to know that but we could be coming to the end of you know every period of history has a time mesoloic uh game of thrones dragons uh columbus nasa what are we in now, dude? I don't even know, really. Freelance. So, you're seeing, you know, everything kind of goes through its time. And I think and this could be what, you know, I don't know. Do you guys think we're at the end of times as far as, like, what American society has been like? Do you think, or do you think we're just going through a little transition period and it's going to come out bigger and brighter? Um... What do you think on that? I'm curious. I, I wonder sometimes is, you know, are we stuck in this in this swipe society where we're just, we're literally just swiping for things that we want. Whether they're human or not, uh, human, food, uh, Instacart, Instaheart. We're looking, all of it is, is we have access to it all. And so does it all lose its meaning when it's right there? If you wake up with food in your mouth, man, it's, then the part of you that wants to eat it'll die, I think. 
Not the part of you that swallows the food, but the part of you that wants to eat. But more so the part of you that wants to hunt. And you guys had a couple calls and thoughts that came in, and I appreciate it. You know, I like to try and keep this as a conversation if we can here and there. And so here's a couple of uh, of calls that came in. Hey, what's up, Theo? This is Ryan sitting on a bench under some nice trees in San Diego. Um, That's called being homeless, Bubby. And you're welcome to do it, dude. You're welcome to do it, bro. Onward. Proud of you. Um, listening to your podcast. And um, you were just talking about swipe society and, you know, are we going to come back from this or, you know, is this is this the last stop on the train line? Uh, personally, I think things are things are kind of dark, man. Um, not right here under the tree, but just in general, um, you know, Americans who don't know each other seem to hate each other and you know robots are taking our jobs um yeah we're yeah i mean you describe you 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 just described every mcdonald's in america right there let's hear more all fucking addicted to this piece of glass in our pockets Mm -hmm. magic orb very addicted to the to the orb baby that's samsung Donnie Samsung and his daddy. Onward. Can't look to the right or look to the left and have a conversation with the person next to us. So um, that's not good. But on the (laughs) other hand, I don't know. It's not all bad. Like your your show, I think, is amazing. I think it's like you're just doing good work. Oh, thank you, man, for saying that. Um, And I didn't mean to cut you off. I don't. It's hard for me to hear. Nice things about myself. Uh, I appreciate them, though. And it's selfish of me to not even let you say them, isn't it? Isn't that selfish? I noticed that about myself. Somebody was saying something nice. I'll stop them. I don't want to hear it, man. Not because I don't believe them. Not because I don't, you know. But I think sometimes at a core space inside of me, I don't... I don't want to hear you say something nice about me because it would conflict with what I've always felt about myself, which are not nice things. Um, And I'm not saying that as like a cry for help or anything like that. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm just trying to share sometimes. I like to examine why I think and feel things. It's, It's the only, it's one of the ways I can use to feel differently. So, but when you said that, it hit me a little. And then I stop. I don't want. I don't want to hear him say something nice. Because if I hear him say something nice, then I'm gonna think, man. What if that's true? What if I actually am a good person? That would go against all the bad wiring that I've had inside of myself since I was little. That I'm not good. I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. <sighs> And I'm not I'm not like it's hard to talk about these things and not have people think that I'm like in some place like where I like I'm not about to slit my I'm not in some desperation space. But all my life I've felt like I'm not good enough. I think that's a common feeling for a lot of people. And I didn't really notice until just then. When I stop, I didn't want to hear you say something nice about me. I appreciate it. I really do, Ryan. It's nice of you to listen. You know, it's nice of you to be in the park, under the tree. It's nice of you to be on unemployment. But, um, but yeah, I just realized that when I stopped, I said, man, I don't want to hear him say something nice about me. And then I realized, man, a lot of times I don't, I, I have trouble hearing people say something nice about me. And then I realized because if I hear them say something, if I let it sink in, if I believe what they're saying, then that's going to go against these little, these things inside of myself that I, that I've always thought I was no good. 
which are things that I learned at a very young age or whatever. Um, and which are things that, that have motivated me most of my life. Uh, so it'd be under, you know, so anyway, this is kind of a lot there, but it's just interesting, man. I, that just kind of happened on your call, but, uh, yeah, man, it's, you know, yeah, we have too much anxiety. We're afraid. Everybody just fighting on the, everybody's afraid to even say what they want. The me, you know, these corporations, Samsung, uh, what else? YouTube, Frigidaire. They're the ones that own, you know, they got us. They got, that's, they're the, they're the, uh, the politicians, the politicians have plug-ins, baby. This, you know, tech is the new fossil fuel. I've been saying it. It's, um, and here's, a, here's something that's interesting. With like notifications and stuff, you, if you don't check, if you don't do a check-in or if there's not, you get a thing. Hey. Like half my text messages are from machines now. I'm literally communicating with machines. You know, it's it's growing. Whatever it is, it's growing. I'm talking into machines right now. Like we're lit. It's all. It's growing. And it's interesting how all the machines hold all the info. They hold all of us. They all have our secrets. They've all. Anytime you've ever said the N word or said the F word or said the uh. L word, you know, you know, if you told somebody you loved them or whatever, you know, it's like any of the things you say that the machines have heard them. So it's crazy that what, like if they wanted to, they could be keeping everyone or many, many people, uh, they could be keeping many people, you know, Captive, you're everybody's just going to be sitting around waiting for the machine to spit out something that they shouldn't have said. You know me, man. I've said it all. I mean, you just you know that. I've said it all, man. Do you have high interest loans or credit card debts? Hell yeah, you do. I've met half of you. With Upstart, you can pay off your existing debt quickly and easily and start living your life. If you're carrying a credit balance month after month, it can feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of debt with no end in sight. Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead. They really can. Upstart can help. It's the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. You can check your rate out without impacting your credit score in minutes for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today. When you go to upstart.com slash T-H-E-O. That's U-P-S-T-A-R-T dot com slash Theo. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Upstart.com slash Theo. Look, fitting health into your routine, that's key. That's major key, man. You got to fit that health into your routine. You need it. Well, Peloton. They're ready to help you. The new Peloton bicycle, the original, is now $400 less. Never been a better moment to commit to your fitness goals at a better cost. That's it. Experience motivation like never before with the Peloton bike. Go to onepeloton.com to learn more. That's O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N.com to learn more. An endless variety of live and on-demand cycling classes, live and on-demand strength, yoga, and stretching classes off the bike. You'll keep coming back for more. That's OnePeloton.com. Um, let's get another call that came in in this response to Swipe Society and that sort of deal. Let's go. Yo, this is Eddie here out in Boise, Idaho. Boise. God, it's nice. If you ever want a damn breath of fresh air, man. Actually, a breath of fresh air sounds disgusting, doesn't it? 
I just want fresh air. I don't want it coming out of somebody's freaking pie hole. I don't want it coming out of somebody's little tater tot cavern. Cavern. I just want fresh air. A breath of fresh air. God. Ugh. Um. But whatever. I'm making this about nothing. Uh, Eddie, onward, br brother. Uh, dude, that'd be awesome if you came out here. Originally from uh, Huntington Beach, California, part of the mass migration out. Liquid Death, you guys gonna buy a new computer or what? Oh, man. Sorry, I just spilled a ton of Liquid Death. For the second time on my computer. Ugh. Damn, we just got this computer. This isn't even mine. Thing a dang lease, bro. Damn. Ugh. I hope we got that little. Might need a new gasket on this bitch. Damn. Onward. Out of that hellhole communist state uh and yeah man i think you're right about the end times you know the the last chapter uh the last book which is revelation <laughs> uh i know you said ephesians but um it is revelation which i'm, I'm sure you, you knew that but uh i didn't know that brother but i appreciate it revelations i'm gonna look at that man i'm gonna look at that i'm sure it's on uh audio book as well onward yeah man i i think it's a great question you ask about um is this the end of american society as we know it and, and i think that they uh the evil powers that uh are at hand are doing everything they can to make sure that it is you know they don't want a stable society you know yeah that's ronnie that's uh donnie samsung that's um you know hero yamamoto Tycho, you know, Lance Tycho, I think it is, or whatever it is. Jeff Bezos. Uh, who's the other guy? Alan Tillamook or whatever. All of these fucks. Onward. They don't want a stable society. You don't do what they're doing to create a stable society. Everything they're doing is intentionally being done to destabilize. Uh, I'm flooding our country with people that aren't from here, that are from other countries, that don't share the culture, that... You know, in a lot of ways, are not coming from stable places, not coming from places where uh, you have um, a, a, a healthy society. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with some of that, man. I agree with some of it. I, you know, it's tough because you want your place to be a welcoming place. You want your home to be welcoming. You want your home to be a place that's welcoming where the fireplace works and where there's food in the cupboard for somebody if they're hungry, that kind of place. You know, you want a welcoming home. Um, but you also, you established a country with certain institutions and, and beliefs and, uh, you know, uh, you know, rules. And you live by them. You grow up living by them. You grow up honoring them and believing you're honoring a system, a greater system. Um, and yeah, and then they make rules that don't, then they, they, you know, certain groups have certain desires and they manipulate them and they take advantage of them. Um, and after a while, I think it does leave some people who have been playing by trying or, you know, nobody's perfect, but I think. Trying to believe in the rules, believe in the systems, believe in, you know, who have been playing by the rules. It leaves you feeling cheated, I think, in some ways. Now, this is also coming from a, I mean, I'm a semi-white, you know, I'm Polish Nicaraguan. I, you know, grew up in extreme poverty, um, but nothing's ever been handed to me in my life, ever. Jesus Christ. Um, and that's fine. 
you know, you want those you dogs. You want that that um that diversity or the adversity. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's definitely interesting, man. It's definitely it's now what it feels like. America is now this like an LLC, like a shell corporation for these darker arts that are going on. You know, and we used to be able to get upset at people as a group. That That's one thing that kind of burned me some. Like, even after 9-11, it was like, well, you know, the media's like, well, you can't be mad at any of these countries. You know, it's like, uh, it's like we, you know, with a, with the, um, the bat thing, proactive or whatever, uh, COVID, with the, uh, coronavirus you used to be able to give oh fuck china you could say somebody made it. either some rich white people made it over there trying to fuck around or somebody made it they're over there batting around they're over there you know smoking dope and fucking eating badass or whatever and now everybody here's got to wear a mask for tears you used to be able to get up say like fuck them but now there's like every you know there's one chinese guy on twitter who's like we i didn't do it and so the media, they use that. They how it's like you're not allowed to be every every other place is allowed to stand up for their beliefs and their rules and their countries. It seems like, and it feels like we're not allowed to stand up for ours sometimes. And maybe that's just maybe the truth is that we are, and we just need to stand up more. You know, that's what I wonder for myself. And that doesn't mean I want to live in some type of unwelcoming place, but um, but definitely the fabric and the textile of what I've always thought, like the pride I've had in, in a lot of Americanism, um, in the good parts of it, I feel like. Uh, man, that fabric's really been stretched in a lot of ways. Um, and it feels like by darker interests. That's what it feels like. And I know the dark arts, baby. You know what I'm saying? I was born in them. You know? I've had spiders in my lungs, dude. I know what's going on. And, uh... Yeah, so who... I mean, this could be... The problem is now there's no other land to just boat off to. You know? Maybe Australia. Maybe that's why that guy called. Maybe, you know, send a B, dog. Send a B. Um... But I don't know, or maybe there'll be some type of revolution or, you know, maybe I, I don't know, or maybe everything's fine. And this is just my perception. Maybe, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Let's take another one here. What's up, Dio? Birdman. Hope you're doing well. Bert, man, put that nigga in the trash can. Leave him outside your door. I'm a mad man. Bert, man, put that nigga in the trash can. Shout out Manny Fresh, bruh. Shout out, uh, um, Chopper. Shout out Wayne. All of them, man. Gang. Well, oh, brother. You know, you were asking, uh, in your last episode about if we think this is the end of America as we know it, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are wondering that, or the United States as we know it. I think a lot of people are wondering that. Uh, but I think the truth is, man, the United States was an experiment from the beginning um, with a lot of different hands in it. And people from all around the world converged here Granted, there were already people here, but people converged here, and it's been a melting pot. We've called it a thing, and we, you know, we've called it a free nation. We've called it many things, but honestly, it's been evolving since it began. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it began, there wasn't much free about it for some people. And he's talking about the Chesapeake and the damn, uh, who else? Chesapeake, all of them, Native Americans, Iditarod, onward. 
there was a lot free about it for others. Um, and I think the same could be said for today. I think the America that we see today is completely different than the one we saw 10 years ago and that different from the one 20 years before it and so on. Um, parties flop, you know, loyalties change, money swaps hands. Yeah, I think it has a great point. It's always been evolving and it's always been an evolving thing. And I've only known one segment. That's one thing that's tough sometimes as a as a human with a limited uh, LS uh, lifespan. That I've only known one segment. I if I'd have been alive for seven hundred years, I might have a different view on stuff. I might be able to look at the longevity, but I can't do that because I can. I'm, my brain only thinks in this frame. Which is such a limited thing about the existence we have, because we are, are, a lot of our perspective is based on just the that sixty seven, you know, the whatever year time frame. Whereas, man, if I could get my brain to know a thousand years, three thousand years, then it might be wow. Well, this is okay. Maybe I see some longer projection i see some different possibility i see something oh i see what's going on here um you know and this so so this stuff's just my perspective and you may have some different perspective uh and that's good and that's beautiful man and and that's you know everybody's allowed their own um but it did used to i think it used to feel different i just sometimes i'm just not sure uh let's see what else man do we had some other great calls that came in um i wanna you know what uh let's take a call let's take a call hey theo um this is uh tanner from oregon and uh basically i'm just calling for a little advice here um so I'm 19 years old, and my dad just died. He just suddenly died, uh, unexpectedly, just got real sick. And, uh, like, in the course of a week, he just uh, just got too sick, and we took him to the hospital, and he passed away there. Um, I, I'm really going through it right now. Um, like, I've just been, like, real, like drinking and smoking, and I don't know. I really don't know how to deal with it. Um, I'm trying to stay away from those dark arts. So, yeah. yeah, man, if you got any advice on how to, like, deal with unexpected, uh, loss and, like, grieving, um, loss of a loved one, um, that'd be really helpful. Gang, brother, thanks for calling, Tanner. And Tanner, that's a name they, uh, you know, you want to do some leather, you want to blackface some leather or whatever, darken up a leather. They use Tanner for it. So you guys got a job. You're employed right out the womb, man. That's nice. You know? You know, different people, you know, they're employed. Sammy, he gets to, you know, he gets to work at the delicatessen. Different people, that name has that built-in job. But um, anyway, man, enough about that. Dude, I'm sorry for your loss, man. I really am. You know, uh, you sound like a decent man. And if you listen to this show, I think you're a good person, honestly. And I say that because I just have a proof of meeting people that listen or a part of this community that honestly are just a lot of good people, dude. God. I mean, my mind and heart are blown away a lot. And, uh... Um... Yeah, I'm just sorry. I appreciate you sharing what's going on. And sometimes you gotta burn that goat a little. You know, sometimes you feel, you know, death, it, it gets in, it, it, that pain, you know. I remember when my dad died, dude, I, I just, I think I was 16, you know, and I just, uh, I was so angry, man, that life had taken, you know, just that. 
I felt like I didn't have anything and this and then this got. I think sometimes I felt even bad for. I don't know. I, sorry, I'm I'm trying to. I, I'm not going to go into my own shit here. Um, man, I bet he was real proud of you. I do know that. I could just tell by your voice, man. You sound like a like a you know, a decent guy. And um, man, imagine what was going through his head. It must have just been scary. And I bet he's proud of you being 19. He got to see you really kind of come into you. Your arms getting longer, get a little facial hair, you know, and become a little bit human. Um, and to have feelings, maybe able to have these feelings. And I don't know how to exactly deal with them. I think stay off of that dark dust. You know, stay off that fentanyl, stay off of that. Uh, but if you got to burn the devil's hand a little bit with some liquor or you got to burn the devil's hand with a cigarette or uh, dope, a little dope cigarette, do it. You know, uh, you know, uh, you didn't, you're not an addict. I mean, you didn't say you are, but you know what I'm saying? Cook that fucking pain away, man. You know, sometimes when life gives you pain, you just got to put that shit on the damn grill. And sometimes that recipe is alcohol and cigarette and that. And do you a dope cigarette and burn it up. But, uh, love you, bro. You know, and I know this isn't real sentimental maybe or doesn't feel like it. I'm, I'm having trouble probably getting into some of my feelings, but just want to let you know that you're thought of. And, um, and it puts some things in perspective. Because, you know, it's about what we can, what can we touch? What can I, you know, yeah, there's all this is American society changing. Our things changing. It's always been changing. Where do we do? What, how do I do? What's, and then here you are. And this is like a real tangible thing. You know, life still means something and we control what we can control. And I hope you got some time with him uh, to at least talk with him before he, uh, before he went on. And you'll see him again, baby. You saw him here. And look where we are. I mean, damn, dude. You know what? <laughs> There's flamingos here, bro. So you will, see, you will see him again, man. You will see him again. And that will be a beautiful time, brother. Um, As always, the hotline, 985-664-9503. I, I'm going to get on out of here. We're going to call up a single mom. And we're going we're gonna to touch what we can control. You know what? I want to thank our Patreon supporters. Uh, for providing us the opportunity to uh, do something nice for single moms. Um, you know, we also, uh, any shows that we're selling tickets for, there will be, the first pre-sale will be on uh, Patreon. Um, I feel like that's kind of fair. Uh, and then it'll go podcast, and then it'll go uh, to everyone. So, um, so, yeah, those will be the steps moving forward for show tickets being sold. You know, we run a slow ship over here. Um, somebody robbed our studio in Los Angeles uh, and, and stole some cameras and stuff like that, still figuring out what was taken. Uh, but we work with what we got. We touch what we can. Um, and, yeah, I'm just grateful for you guys, man. Get to go to these places coming up. Richmond, Baltimore. I'll see you guys this weekend. Uh, next week, we're out in uh, up in uh, Portland, Maine, Burlington, Vermont, Albany, dude. Uh, we went to Wilkes Barra. Uh, damn, I mean, it's just been a joy. You guys coming out, bearing with me as I'm figuring out this new set. It's dice. I mean, it's... Um, it's been an adventure though. It's been an adventure. So let's touch what we can touch today. Uh, and check it. We got, let's give, let's give a call now to this. Um, well, let's see who submitted this single. Let's see who submitted this single mom here. Hey, Theo. My name is Daniel and I'd like to nominate my best friend, Jenny, for the single mom nominations. 
I believe that Jenny deserves this nomination because she's a great person, an amazing friend, and an exceptional mom. Uh, she works and studies full-time to become a massage therapist and to shape a better future for herself and her daughter. Uh, Jenny is an amazing role model. Uh, she taught me that no matter how life gets and how difficult shit may be, you just put a smile in your face and keep going because nobody else got you and your loved ones beside yourself. Uh, Jenny had a very rough upbringing that uh, what I personally think would really break a person, but she pulled herself out of the dirt and shaped herself to be the person that she is now. Uh, she's an amazing role model for us in our friend group, and we really love her to pieces. Oh. Um, believe that this girl does deserve something amazing coming to her. Uh, I appreciate you letting me nominate her, gang gang. Gang, baby, thank you very much for the nomination. And that fella, beautiful guy right there, looks a little bit like Joran Vandersloot, kind of, but um, obviously healthier and doing better than that guy. Um, and thank you. This guy's obviously, I want to say I'm, I want to say Amish, but I think I'm, I could be, I could be wrong. And he could also be, I mean, shit, the guy could be from damn uh, Fort Wayne. Who knows? Her name is Janie. She lives in Winnipeg, Canada. There you go. That's what I was hearing. And that guy, a little bit of Canadian, a little bit of hidden white. Um, she's in school full time to become a massage therapist. Awesome. Oh, that's sweet. She's currently saving for a car to drive her daughter to daycare. She's currently taking a cab. Ooh. Hard to find a cab even these days. You know, a lot of time you got to know somebody that smokes cigarettes or somebody that, um, you know, has been in a domestic dispute and is getting back on their feet. It's even, I mean, those people usually that drive cabs or people, some people will leave their family. It used to be a man would leave his family and get into the ta in the cab business. You know, and he'd be taking you somewhere and he'd be like, I had a daughter. You're like, ugh. Oh. I'm late for Bible study, sir. Uh, Janie has a daughter, Penelope. Let's let's give her a call to say hey. Hey, hello. Hello. Hey, Janie, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, good. You look cute. Sorry, I was I, not like in a weird way or anything like that. I was just saying you look nice. Thank you. I actually have a I can't hear. Um, hold on. We're just getting an audio issue fixed on our end. Okay, sounds good. Okay, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so I, I just work on a podcast. My name's Theo, and I work on a podcast. And um, we have some of our listeners sometimes submit like single mothers that like, they just, we, we've kind of been doing it for a few years now. And, and people will submit single moms uh, that they, that have really affected their life or touched them in some way. And so we had a listener named Daniel. And I think this fellow might be from another country or continent. I'm not sure. But uh, he thinks the world of you. And he just sent in a video and just said that we should give you a call and say, hey. That's really nice of him. That's really unexpected. He's kind of an asshole sometimes. So that's yeah. nice to hear. I could see him having a little bit of hidden asshole in him. And that seems to be, uh, you know, that's the American. That, that's just an, the, the, the maybe that's the Canadian way. Are you Canadian? Uh, I'm Canadian, yes. He's um he's actually Russian Israeli, but he, ah. he lives here. Okay. He lives here now. One of those snow Jews they call him up there. Yeah, if he's Russian Israeli, baby, definitely. That's a cold cashier, baby, right there. Um and how do you know him? Have you guys ever been lovers or y'all are friends or what's his status? He's my best friend. Oh. Yeah. That's sweet. Well he obviously thinks uh, a lot of you and you have a child up there with you? Yes, I do. Yeah. Penelope, she's four. Oh, nice! I just started vaping. It's just CBD. Um, it's okay. It's okay. I will. I'll vape too. I'll vape okay, too yeah. It. Let's go. <laughs> Man, it's hard to get through the day without vaping. I think sometimes. Do you? No, I agree. You don't let your kid vape. Can children vape or not? No, no way. She doesn't even know I vape. Yeah, cool mom. Cool mom. <laughs> Um, and how long is, so how, how old is your daughter? She's four. Oh, nice. What does she like to do? Uh, well, she's very crazy. And right now she wants to be a pop star. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, she likes to sing and dance, and she's very into. Um, we li- we do a lot of like fake music festivals in our living room. Mm-hmm. Put on some YouTube and dress up and dance. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, my sister wanted to be a pop tart. I remember when we were kids, and uh, she would put frosting on her back. My other sister would put frosting on her back. I remember sometimes. Um, <laughs> But anyway, just different. But anyway, um, <laughs> well, yeah, we just wanted to give you a call and say, hey, uh, you know, on behalf of Daniel, who obviously thinks the world of you, and we just wanted to give you a nice <laughs> gift. We're just going to give you 750 bucks to go do something fun with your kiddo. Um, oh, my God. So, yeah, y'all can go do something fun. Uh, what does your kid like to do besides um, dancing in the living room? Like if you went out somewhere. If we went out somewhere, we'd probably go bowling. She loves to bowl and loves to go to the arcades. Oh, nice. Yeah. And Canada, what do y'all do? Y'all do? Oh, y'all have snow. Y'all have snow coming in Canada. We do, but it hasn't started yet. We got a little bit on on Halloween. It just lasted for like ten minutes, and then it was gone. Ooh, maybe get it. Y'all do sleds? We do. We do a lot of sledding. We broke our sled last year. Yeah, it might be time for that new sled. You feel me? Sounds um, good to me. Well, look, we just wanted to say, uh, yeah, happy early holidays, and um, and. Uh, just on behalf of Daniel, we just wanted to say hey and, and, and good luck being a mom out there. Thank you very much. All right, sweetheart. Have a good day. You as well. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, and that's beautiful to see there. Janie with her daughter and that uh, good sense of humor. You know, thank you. Thank you guys for supporting the podcast. and lucky to be able to have a moment where... Uh, Yeah, maybe they could do something fun, you know? Maybe they go spend some time together and they sit there and laugh or do ice cream or, you know, or just have a moment where they both feel pretty good together at the same time. And if we can invest in little things like that together, then that's God, baby. Uh, Somebody sent this gift. I do not know what it is. Um, I'm going to open it up. We'll do a, uh, we will do a, um, we'll do an unboxing soon. We got some gifts that have been piling up and some nice things that were sent. This says, Hey, Theo, after listening to your podcast, I feel like I can relate to some of the ways you feel. One of the most difficult things is feeling you don't matter. Almost like your pain or struggle is invisible. I want you to know that you are seen, you're important, you are valued, you are loved, and you are enough. Here's a small gift to serve as a reminder that you are okay. Recently saw your show in Wilmington, Delaware. Thank you for a night filled with laughter, Joshua 1-9. What is Joshua 1-9? I don't know. We went to, I think, 8th back. We went to... We went to uh, 8th Baptist, I think. Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Be not frightened and be do not be dismayed, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Um Oh, that's nice, man. Beautiful picture here of him and his his spouse and uh gang gang, Brenda Lane. Oh, I thought this was from a man. Well, there you go, it's from a woman. That's even better, actually. All right. Thank you for the beautiful gift. Uh and thank you for the nice words, you know. Um, nobody in my life's made me for, feel more cared about I don't think than uh, than strangers you know uh, than you guys and I say strangers but I shouldn't have said that but you know what I mean than um, the new folks let's see what this gift is man dang this thing better be good. I, now, the, the newspaper is good on it. Got a little rat on it. A little cold, a little wet rat, that thing. Been out there probably sipping soup. You know, a rat would do anything to get a little bit of damn soup on him. God. That's God right there. This a trick box or something? Damn, it's like a damn trick candle. Oh, and here's another, another little box inside, inside of a bag. See, this is, look, this is, you know, it. this is like one of those bills that, you know, one of the, 
oh, you know, it's like one of the bills going through Congress. There's so many things attached. You got the D, you know, and now this is in a bag. Next thing you know, everybody that's deaf gets a freaking, you know, a new jet. Um, genuine leather bracelet. Wow. And I bet it was a little lighter than before Tanner got a hold of it, huh? Oh, that's good. That's good right there. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like to have me a little leather bracelet right there. It's like having part of a pet on your arm. Praise God. Okay. That's a sweet gift, and I'm going to keep this card somewhere nice. And this computer will short out soon. Um, let's go out on a... Uh, You know, I'm going to go out again. This song, this song, I, I don't know how this song does this for me, but I've never felt like a song, never in my life have I felt like a song. Uh, I mean, this is that Ema. If you want to have some feeling, you want to sit right there in a damn rocking chair with your broken heart, this one will do it. You know, if, if it's you got to be in that mood, you can't listen to if you're trying to get hyped or something, you go into the arcade or you go going to do a little bit of sex or, you know, you stole a bicycle and you're going over to some girl's house or whatever to try and get a little little cookie, you know. A little bit of uh, that little snot cookie, you feel me, gang, baby. All right. Um, thank you guys for being a part of my life and be good to yourselves and uh, you deserve that. And I'm going to try it too. Thank you for this nice gift. Thank you guys for coming out in Wilmington. Uh, thank you guys for not giving up on me. And uh, to everybody that called, uh, let's keep it going, man. We got each other. That's something we do have. I believe that, man. Um, all right. This is Evan Bartell's Lonesome off the uh, album Lonesome. And um, yeah, hit the hotline if you need something 985 664 9503. Oh, uh, and um, what else? I don't know. I feel bad about leaving, kind of. But we'll be back. You know, we'll be back. Gang, man.
man. You don't have to say you're sorry if it's too hard for you to love me. Damn, that line freaking grills me like a damn fish, baby. That shit. You know, I think I've always felt like that. Like nobody, like I never got the, pro I mean, I don't know, man. Like I never got the proper apology for somebody not being able to love me the way I needed to be. Um, but then you realize you don't get the apology. You know, that's just part of that is just life. You know, that's just life. And the scariest thing is that those types of things can happen to us or we can feel like they happen to us. Sometimes somebody loved you perfectly. It just didn't land on you well. You may have potholes in your pot. And... I fell off my thoughts. Um, yeah. Sometimes it just doesn't land on you right. And then the scariest thing is how do you do, how do you then move forward in your life and not do the same thing to other people? You know, I've been going to this sex and love addiction thing recently and learning more about it. And damn, I just have a lot in that space of where, uh, just there's just a lot in that space for me and it, and anyway anyway this episode went a lot longer than i expected man um but you guys be good to yourselves that's evan bartels off his new album lonesome and the song the, the title song is called lonesome i believe i don't know if that's called what it's called but uh but yeah dude if you want to if you want to go through your feelings bro like a damn just a like a just like a rolodex God, he's got all he'll he'll dial up the numbers straight to your damn soul right there. He's got the one he's got the one nine hundred line straight to your damn soul. Praise God, man. You guys be good to yourselves, gang.